Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Dickwin and in today's video, I'll be making some Korean barbecue short ribs or kalbi in the Instant Pot. So this recipe is pretty straightforward and easy to make and it's probably one of the most frequent or most common recipes that I make in the Instant Pot alongside the ribs recipe that I showed a few weeks back. If you haven't checked that video out, I'll leave links to watch that in the top right corner here. But this recipe is super great and super um, convenient to make in the Instant Pot because of how pressure cooking really breaks down and make the beef more tender. In terms of the recipe itself, you just need two things. First is you need the beef short ribs. These are flanken style, so they are cut into strips like that with the bones um, still intact here. And you'll need some Korean barbecue beef sauce or like um, kalbi sauce here. I'll leave links to make them in the description box below if you, um, if you don't have access to an Asian grocery store nearby. But, yeah, uh, for today's recipe, I'll be using this pre-made one that I bought at H Mart a few weeks back. So now I'm going to go ahead and marinate it. For the sake of simplicity, I'll be using the inner pot here in the instant pot to marinate so that one, I get to clean one less thing and two, like I'm going to be cooking all these meat in the instant pot um, container here anyway. So yeah, just a convenience factor. So now I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands first and then we'll start marinating it all right this is how the short ribs look like so as you can see they're pretty thin so you don't really need to marinate them for very very too long a few hours really is enough to really help to um, get the flavors of this marinade into the meat here so yeah so what i'm going to do now is that um, i'm going to put it into the inner part of the instant pot but yeah this is about two, this is about three pounds, close to three pounds of meat here, the bone intact. So what I'm going to do is that we're just going to put everything inside. Try to put this here. Okay. So for the actual barrier itself, I have it open here. I'm going to put about half of this. So it's about, this is, the no, total weight of this is about two pounds, so about a pound for three pounds of meat here. Okay, here. So I'm just going to get my hands a little dirty here just to make sure that all of the meat gets adequately covered with the marinade because this is the only seasoning that's going to be going in. I'm not going to add any salt or any kind of extra seasoning when I'm putting it in the instant pot later on. So yeah, it's about half of this, um, about a pound of sauce or three pounds, I would say adequate. But you can just eyeball it, just add less or more depending on like um, how you like it. And in case if you're wondering what's the main ingredient of this, from what I can see, it's the main ingredient is pear puree. In the label here, I can't read it, but like from the picture and like the ingredient list, I see that this is 16.5% of pear. Like, I don't read Korean, but like, yeah, that picture there says 16.5% of pear puree. And I think the next predominant um, ingredient really is just sugar. The end result of this sauce or this um, this kalbi is really a very sweet and very like uh, um, chari and like um, caramelized meat that makes it like it's so irresistible to eat. And yeah, so and the additional sauce, I think I'm done mixing it around. So the additional sauce that's going into um, here I'll be um, using that as like, sort of like glaze and I put it in the oven um, at the end. So you'll, you'll, you'll definitely be using the uh, excess uh, marinade that's not being, um, that you're putting inside. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is just to cover it up and put it in the fridge for about three hours. And I'll be back in three hours to put it in the instant pot to cook. So this is how it looks like right now. So I'll be back in a few hours. All right, we are back. It has been about three hours since I last placed this in the fridge. So what I'm going to do now is to put it in the instant pot to cook it. So I'm going to show how it looks like right now. So just one piece here. As you can see, um, the marinade has gone into the short ribs here. Previously, it, was, it had a bright red. Now it had a, like a slightly paler um, red color to the short rib here. So yeah, the marinade has gone in pretty well. So before I'm going to put it into the Instant Pot, what I'm gonna do right now is just to 
take out the gravy, um, no, take out the uh, marinade so that it doesn't um, cook within the instant pot. We'll use this as sort of, sort of, sort of a glaze afterwards when we broil it in the oven. Okay, just gonna put it in this bowl here, right? All right, I just turned on the light here. I just forgot that my the first few seconds of that shot might have been a little bit underexposed. But yeah, I got the light back on. But also I got the trivet here. I'm gonna be putting the trivet inside and also adding in about a cup of water into the Instant Pot. So it's just normal water here. A little bit more, yeah. So this water is just to help the Instant Pot um, steam inside. And you do need a cup of water inside the Instant Pot in order for it to reach pressurization. So now that's done, I'm just basically gonna put all of this um, meat back inside. I'm gonna go ahead and pluck this Instant Pot back behind and we'll talk a little bit about settings for um, cooking this um, beef short ribs here. Just wiping it down a little. All right, right now I have the Instant Pot here plugged in. So what I'm gonna do is to click on pressure cook. We're gonna make sure the pressure level here is at high pressure and to make sure that also the um, pressure, uh, pressure cook setting is set to more here. So in this more setting, I'm gonna put it to 20 minutes. That's it, so I'm just gonna close the lid. So I'm just gonna make sure that the lid is in the seating position here and we're good to go then. All right, I'm back with the Instant Pot. It is done here, I just plugged it out of power. It just, I had it naturally released, it's just done. I'm going to open it, you'll see steam. Ooh. Look at that steam there. Right, so what I'm going to do right now is to broil it in the oven for about a minute on each side. I'm going to take it out here. As you can see, the bones have, have kind of like started tearing out. That is a good sign there. So what I'm going to do is just to dip it in the um, remaining um, marinade from earlier. That will give it an extra coating. Just going to lay it on the baking sheet here. So I have a baking sheet here with a wire rack and some um, aluminum foil just to catch the extra dripping. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so as you can see, the leftover marinade here, some of the bones have dropped out, which is totally fine. So I used most of it. And surprisingly, yeah, I managed to fit in the, uh, my baking sheet here just fine. So what I'm going to do right now is the oven is fully boiling there. I'm just put it in about a minute, minute or so each side. And it's going to depend on how you see it, how charred or how, how, how kind of a caramelized you want it to be. So I'm going to flip it over after about a minute and we'll come back once we get the final product, which is fully, fully delicious right now. Right now it smells very, very good, but I think so a little broil in the oven will make it taste even better. All right, as you can see, it's out of the oven. I got the baking sheet here. As you can see, the meat has got itself some charness on the ends. And you can see some of the fat has rendered out a little. So makes it extra crispy and extra delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste test here. All right, I have it properly set up right now. I have my knife here, so I'm just gonna take one piece here. Just cut it. I really like to cut into these. This is how, in, in the restaurants, they usually have it and like, they cut into this single, so one bone per piece. So I like to do that. And it's still very hot right now. Give it a taste test right now. This is bursting full of flavor, even though it's just been marinated for about three hours, like the flavor really goes into the meat itself and it's super tender. Like I can just carry it off. Like usually in restaurants, when you actually grill this, you need to somehow it's, it's a bit more, less tender, you got to bite on it. But this one is like, because it's been in the instant pot and the pressure cooking has fully tenderized it. And it's super nice, super moist inside still. As you can see, it's fall off the bone. The bone is still clean off the meat. So my favorite part of eating this it's really when it comes to the bones that have some of the muscle that is not fully rendered 
and it's still intact. That actually feels, um, I think so, I don't know what it is. It, it, it tastes like a soft bone. It's not like a bone, but it's more a muscle, where it's actually super chewy. Like, as you can see, it wraps around the bone here. And this is the part where I like it, like, Yeah, I like the part because it's mostly a very chewy bit and has punches and features a lot of taste. Like super, super tasty. Oh, look at this. As you can see, I can just tear this piece off. Super tender, really breaks down properly in the Instant Pot. If you were to grill this again, like you might need to chew through it and you can't just pull it off like that. So to eat this, you can eat it with some rice and also add some kimchi in the side just to balance it out with some, a lot of meat here, a lot of strong flavors. to have the kimchi to balance it out and the rice also to have it as a side option so that this is kind of like um, overpowering taste. So the rice will have like some balance there and the kimchi also. But yeah, that is just 20 minutes of pressure cooking in the Instant Pot and about three hours of, um, three hours of marinating. Got this big bowl of food. I'm not gonna eat it all. I'm just gonna put it as sort the of meal prep. I'm gonna reheat it and eat it throughout the week. That is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And like, if you do try this recipe, leave um, some comments down below of what you think and what kind of improvements that you'll make to this recipe. Make sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. I'm going to first take some bureau shots and then enjoy this food.